secret seems like something you choose to keep to yourself. And maybe a lying has a little bit more of a kind of sinister feel to it, or like there's, you know, some kind of intent to get away with something. And it seems that we are all entitled to have our secrets that we maybe should be able to keep certain parts of ourself for ourself. So maybe that's a secret. And then that kind of has a feel of like maybe something to be kind of nurtured, you know, because there's this little story or piece or part that um, maybe you choose not to share. And I kind of like the feel of that more so. Yeah, it seems like there's some sort of idea out there that like you're supposed to be an open book and that we shouldn't have secrets. I feel like I hear that around. And in a lot of ways, I, li I like that idea. Like, yeah, I have nothing to hide. But that just seems a lot easier said than done. And maybe just not very realistic. And got me thinking a little bit about the shadow. Should I say what the shadow is? Okay. So that's a concept that Jung came up with and it refers to the parts of ourself that we've been, that are, that are marginalized, that we've been told maybe by specifically by parents or an authority figure. Maybe it's just like a belief out there in the ether that that part's not okay. So we kind of make that not be part of our, of our working, waking identity. But it's still there. And then because it's not embraced and integrated, maybe it comes out in these kind of squirrely sideways ways, maybe like a lie. Um, shadow, secrets. So maybe our shadow is the secrets we have from ourselves. It's like the parts of ourself that we deny. And so consciously we don't even, um, yeah, we're just like not engaging with that part. So maybe for myself, that could look like, um, like kind of just enjoying maybe being mischievous, maybe doing things that are kind of sneaky, um, like maybe being kind of provoking. So maybe that's that kind of edge, you know, that's that area where um, it's this part of myself that like, I probably wouldn't admit to, you know, and like maybe that's not something that most people see in me. Maybe they think like, they probably come up with words like, oh, Dana's really sweet and she's really considerate and she's caring, she's a good listener. Maybe she's kind of silly sometimes, but like they probably don't, they probably won't be like, oh yeah, she could be pretty sneaky and she can do some pretty like sideways things to get her way. And it's totally true, but I don't put that on resumes and um, I don't talk about that. I might talk about it on first date. It kind of depends what I'm going for. <laughs> it's getting hot. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have any more questions for me? secrets have had an impact on your life hmm. or do have an impact on your life? Yes. And I can't think of anything really explicitly, but I feel like in my family, maybe secrets were the things that you just sensed and you were there, but there weren't stories for. And so maybe as a kid growing up, it's like, they're just the things you sense, but you maybe, yeah, you don't have the words for it. Like no one else is acknowledging it. And it's like elephant in the room kind of, kind of feel. And they're the things I think are really easy to talk yourself out of, um, but they're there. And 
think at some point getting older and like piecing enough things together, maybe it was like, okay, like I, like, yeah, there were things that weren't talked about. So that, that affected me. Um, currently, I think I have a pretty good sensor for when people are being authentic. And so if someone is being secretive and maybe they're not being authentic and I haven't quite like played with how those things fit together. Um, then I think in the past in particular, I might kind of like call that out or, um, just, or maybe react to it. Like even take it personally, like, Oh, this person's not being authentic with me. And it would kind of make me angry. So I think I'm probably a little more forgiving of that now because there's a lot of reasons people aren't their authentic selves all the time. It's kind of a lot to ask of someone. So I think I'm probably more flexible. So maybe there's more room for secrets now in my life. What about... <clears throat> On a professional level. Hmm. I had a feeling you were going there. Um, in my profession in particular. Hmm. I mean, what role does secrets play in your life as a professional? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, so as, as a therapist, I, you know, people disclose things to me they may or may not be sharing with others. And I, in general... I mean, I encourage people to, to come up with, or to, to consider being transparent as it works for them so that it's a conscious choice. I think that's the piece that is the difference. Are we holding secrets because we're scared of the consequences and we're uncomfortable and we think that part's really not okay? Like whatever it is, this part of self, this thing I did, um, this belief system I have, Am I keeping it a secret because I really don't think it's okay? And maybe there's shame around it or something pretty, you know, that can be heavy. That can be a heavy feeling to hold. And if that's the case, maybe it's not worth keeping the secret. Um, if it's something maybe like, oh, here's this part of myself I'm just not ready to share yet, then I think that's a super help healthy choice to make in that circumstance. So I think it's about how consciously are we engaging with our own secrets? And from that place, I mean, I don't find it burdensome, I guess, to to know of people's secrets. Maybe it's more burdensome if it seems like it's destructive and it's not shifting. And you're bound in a certain way to keep those secrets, aren't you? Yeah, I guess. And it's interesting, though. I mean, besides ones that are, like, like, really destructive. And I guess I'm bound, I'm also bound to be encouraging people to be working on their health and so if a secret is holding like a destructive element in their life I feel like I'm also just as bound to be um, honest about that perspective so I guess that it does, is why maybe it doesn't feel burdensome mm -hmm. yeah. and it seems like in a way you're just you're sort of a safe deposit box for the things people tell you. I never really thought of it that way. I don't really like the idea of that. Hmm. I mean, I hope in some ways that secrets people share with me either feeds a, feed my process or... Yeah, I don't know, like this idea of like someone just sort of like putting, like kind of dumping stuff. I guess maybe that's not what you meant. I guess I more meant just confidentiality. Yeah, you know, if I need to process something, I feel like I am not like, maybe, maybe I don't hold confidentiality the way you're supposed to, but I feel like I'll, I'll process generally thing, general things about the way 
a secret is impacting me without giving away you know, specific information or anything like that. But yeah, I don't know. It's a lot to really keep a secret, I guess, I'm realizing. Like, it takes a lot of energy. something come out into the open um, and thought like wow that's a beautiful thing that that came out into the open mm. I think I feel that way a lot of times when people express emotions and it seems like maybe it's hard for them to do. That almost feels like a secret coming out. Like there's just this release and there's just this truth expressing itself that is beyond words and maybe beyond what can be physically contained at that point. And it's, it's so like, yeah, I don't know if that, if that's what you're asking, but, and then there's just like this moment of like, yeah, there's tears or maybe people don't know what to do or it's kind of intense and it's hard, but, and I should say, um, something just sort of like came out and you could just feel the visceral release from it. I like those moments, even if they're a little, gotta breathe a little deeper. Any last things you want to say? Hmm. I appreciate the opportunity to consider these things. Mm -hmm.